Hey everyone, it's a beautiful day here. I'm so happy to be sitting outside. Beautiful, beautiful. Wanna see? Everything's growing beautifully. The trees are getting leaves. Isn't that so cool? I'm so happy my gorgeous nature canopy's coming back. Look at all my garden stuff. Got peppers and Japanese eggplant and different kinds of tomatoes and um I've got a blueberry bush back there. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, so yeah, the topic of the week is dealing with people who ignore your ED. I find in general that people who cannot relate to your personal perception on anything are made uncomfortable. It's fear of the unknown, it's a natural instinct, I guess, to be wary or leery of that which is not familiar. And for most people, the ED experience is not familiar at all. Arc Drummer said this really well. To try and conceive of this mindset if you don't have an eating disorder is very difficult and really is a bit much to ask of us for people to totally understand. However, it has been my experience and it does bother me quite a bit that people who are dancing around a stigma of any kind, the awkward, uncomfortable energy is palpable um, and nothing is said and it becomes such a potent, negative, disturbing, stressful, agitating, anxious dynamic, and it's not healthy for anyone. Um, so communication is huge, Arc Drummer was also talking about voice your feelings if somebody around you is acting like distant or if you are engaging in symptoms and that nothing is said. Let them know how it makes you feel. And this is a tough thing because EDs are so private anyway that it's very much a damned if you do, damned if you don't for our loved ones because we want compassion but we don't. Save me, leave me alone. You know, um, that's like a classic symptom that we have is like, help me go away. You know, um, wanting and needing support but resenting that we need it and or being afraid to accept it and it's this constant battle going on this dual consciousness of I want people to notice and care but I don't want to be bothered so yeah it's it's very difficult to ex to number one expect anybody to be able to relate the actual experience of ED consciousness and second we don't even know what we prefer at any given time so it's a very complex issue and I think it requires a great deal of sensitivity both on our part and on the part of our loved ones to communicate that's really crucial if it's a day where you're feeling alone or even an hour that you're feeling alone and you just need a hug, some compassion, some positive feedback if you're feeling particularly insecure, inadequate. Um, I, you know what you can do that's like a huge thing? Go to anyone you love and say, tell me five good things about me because I'm having trouble finding anything. You know, positive feedback. Um, if you don't want to keep loved ones off guard, sit down and make a list with them what are all of your positive attributes anything you could think of and then they can have a copy of that to read to you when you need feedback you know um and if it's a time that you just need to be alone or don't feel comfortable talking or aren't receptive to any sort of physical affection or emotional consolation then that's okay too you know so really, I think communication is the most important thing. Other than that, 
it's been my experience in chronic illness of any kind that the healthy can't relate and it makes them very uncomfortable and a lot of times people will run the other way it's horrible but I think again it comes down to fear of the unknown and people are number one terrified by having to look mortality in the face and let's face it with EDs that can be an issue and number two it's just so much easier to pretend everything's okay there's a reason that wearing the mask and I'll be back sorry about that interruption earlier my mom came home and um yeah so what I was saying is yeah it's it's so much easier in life to see no evil speak no evil hear no evil um pretend everything's okay and what I was starting to say is there's a reason so many people put on a mask when they present themselves to the world and are not genuinely themselves it's protective and it's also a degree of societal cohesiveness um, and the path of least resistance so it is more likely that people will be more than happy to ignore an issue rather than risk confrontation understanding that that's the social dynamic and we probably all know it well because if you have an eating disorder you've cultivated a mask of your own for sure that just may help you like keep that in mind when you're wondering why people are the way they are i think people are afraid to offend don't like confrontation and are completely out of their comfort zone in terms of how to respond to this they need to learn just like we had to learn so if it's somebody you love communication and regular communication this isn't like one therapy session where you explain and then ex assume that they know and yes talking is hard and yes sharing is hard but again like what we need changes moment to moment so it is necessary to know like or to give a cue for whether you want support or would rather just be left alone just be open about it don't expect other people to read your mind because they can't so that's why i wanted to share on that note so this week's question of the week is what's your favorite weather my all-time favorite weather is thunderstorms believe it or not they're kind of crazy and scary at times for me but i love witnessing the power of nature and the other reason I love it so much is because it means the warm season is here. And I have seasonal affective disorders, so like fall and winter are really hard and early spring. And I always just like burst with joy when everything's getting green and nice out. And yeah, thunderstorms come in warm months, so it's comforting to my spirit that, hey, I'm in my favorite time of year as well. So yeah, thunderstorms is my favorite ever. So that's it for this week. Much love and be well. And um, as always, if you have any questions or topic suggestions, let us know. All right. Much love and be well, precious ones. See you next week. Bye, guys.